guys and welcome to a new setup review video. It has been a while but we actually got so many entries this time around that I may actually make a second video from it so make sure you are subscribed so you don't miss it. We're actually really close to 280,000 subscribers which is insane so if you'd like to join the group please click that subscribe button. But anyway um, we will be looking at a range of mainly leopard gecko enclosures this time round and I have decided to split these into categories. Before we begin I did just want to give myself a shout out because as you may know I have had interactive guides with Retrieve for a while now where we take a bunch of my videos, sort them into topics, transcribe and translate them and there's also an opportunity on there for you to contact me directly if you have any questions. Well now we have a new guide and funnily enough it's all about putting together tanks so this starts with beginner tanks, your baby gecko, to full-blown planted naturalistic setups. We'll cover things such as tank size, comparing heating equipment, comparing different types of setups such as using paper towel or carpet or switching to loose substrate. And I believe there's around like 18 videos in this one guide. So. It's pretty beefy. We also have other guides on there which you can purchase on their own or as part of a bundle to save some money. So head over to leopardgecko.retrieve.com slash store and check out my guides. But yeah, let's start off with the SOS tier. So this setup comes from Steven. It's a 40 gallon tank and he wanted to know if he could cohab to females. Now in my opinion something I've preached throughout my channel is not to cohab geckos. It's just not a good idea. Females are likely to tolerate each other until they don't anymore. It's not like rabbits or dogs or something where they'll bond. Um, another thing I would say is obviously this tank is nice and big but I would recommend using more uh, larger hides in the tank as it looks quite empty and if you're going to provide a larger tank you're just going to want more coverage. This next setup comes from Lucas. Now he has an almost one year old gecko in this 20 gallon tank and he asks how he can improve it and give his gecko the best life. Now he did also mention that he offers his gecko 10 to 15 mealworms. So that's one thing you could improve instantly is to offer a variety of food if you can. Mealworms are okay if they're part of a varied diet but on their own they're not great. I mean you can get away with it but it isn't the best. Um, as for the tank, I would say if you can, I mean it looks fine, but if you can maybe add more coverage or larger hides. I'm not sure how big the gecko is in comparison to these hides, but since this is only a 20 gallon tank and the hides look quite small in it, I am wondering whether you need bigger ones. Um, but also props to you for adding a background. This is something that I have to mention a lot with glass tanks, but Glass tanks, leopard geckos can find a little overwhelming if they don't have a background or covered on the sides and the back just because they can be seen at every angle. This next setup I didn't have a name for other than Popcorn, the six year old leopard gecko, but basically she lives in this setup and her owner would like to know how they can improve the overall look. I'd probably recommend adding a background, like we just mentioned, it can really help. And um, I know she switched from Eco Earth to paper towel, so if you didn't want to go with the loose substrate then maybe you could try slate for example. You can get um, like slate placemats if you wanted to cover the floor in them so it looks a little more natural. And then sort of build up the areas with other bits of slate, but maybe you just need something different in terms of substrate. I don't think you said why you changed from Eco Earth, um, but I always use Earth Mix Arid. And the final setup for this section is from Stuart and he has a four week old gecko and would love to know how to improve his setup. So at the moment, as you can see, he uses paper towel and I actually think that's absolutely fine for a baby gecko. I mean, four weeks is, I imagine it's absolutely tiny. Um, you could probably introduce substrate at like at maybe two months. I mean, technically my geckos, when they came from the breeder like Gizmo and Mini, and this was 15, 16 years ago, they were actually on Eco Earth like as hatchlings. So it is possible, but I understand why you have it on paper towel. Um, and once you, if you do choose to move it onto a loose substrate, it'd be interesting to see if your gecko loves to dig like Maui did as soon as I moved him onto Earth Mix Arid. And tech wise, you're doing really well. You got your deep heat projector, new UV. So I would probably recommend projecting the heater onto slate. It'd just be more effective. So maybe you could make a slate hide. And also, with your gecko being so small, they might even snuggle between the bits of slate. Um, and as always, a background can always help transform a tank. 
But as your gecko is so young, I think this is a perfectly acceptable starter home for the first month or so. Now for the DIY tier, so you guys have been busy transforming your gecko's tanks. So um, I decided to put this one in the DIY tier, not because, you know, they made a background or anything from expanding foam. I just really love the creativity behind how Molly has stacked the rocks in this enclosure. It looks super cool, multiple places to hide, the curving natural staircase. Um, as you can see, the tank looks really cool. The next setup is from Rebecca and it's our only crested gecko one this time around but I'm sure I'll try to add some more in the next video but she actually made her own background in a 45 by 45 by 60 centimeter enclosure. She would like to upgrade in the future but she wanted to know if there are enough climbing opportunities in here and I would say yes definitely. I really love the cork pieces, I think your gecko is going to love that and I think this is an excellent example of how to provide climbing opportunities for a crested gecko. Then we had this DIY project from Hayley and um, this is her daughter Amy's gecko and they've been building a grout background for the gecko. They say they use UV light and they have a few plants but not many. So one quick tip I'd give you if you are aiming to grow plants in the tank make sure you do have an LED growth lamp like uh, Jungle Dawn and make sure you have decent soil so something like Eco Earth, Cocoa Fibre, that's more of a filler substrate and not much grows very well in that. So you want something that will support plant growth. We have a similar issue in Emma's tank here because she wants to grow a bushier plant to provide more coverage for her gecko. Um, but I don't believe she's using a growth lamp. So make sure you use that. And a plant I could recommend is Carrick's grass. That's why I use a mini in Maui's tank. It's quite thick and once established, it can spread. Uh, one thing I would recommend is moving the heater over to the same side as a UV and project it on slate if you can. Um, and Emma did ask how to encourage her gecko to use the space more. I do cover this in another video, so so I don't repeat myself, uh, that video is all about getting your gecko um, into a bigger tank and how to actually use that space. So I'll link that here and below if you want to check that out. And finally for this section, Sparrow sent in this very whimsical setup. It's so cute. She just wanted to know um, how she could improve the hot hide, I believe she said she was going to be replacing it soon. I think it's this little slate area. And she wanted my opinion on the setup and she was a little worried that her gecko climbs a lot. She doesn't want it to fall. I actually had the same issue with Maui. He loves to climb. Uh, personally, I really like this. I don't think there's tons to improve. However, one way of resolving two issues, the hot hide and your gecko climbing a lot, is to make a big hot hide out of slate like I've done in my tanks. This way your gecko can climb and it can get closer to the UV because I know you said you're using the Arcadia Shade Weller. Well, with that lamp, you want a 10 to 12 inch distance between your gecko at basking and the lamp. Um, so there's a chance right now, if it's bigger than that, your gecko's getting exposed to no UV, which might be why he's climbing so much to get the UV he needs. So what we could do is build up the hot hide with a slate hide, bits of slate. Uh, it can get nice and warm if you're using something like a deep heat projector or a halogen. Your gecko gets to climb and it gets the amount of UV it requires. Now for our bioactive tier. So the first one comes from Frankie. They have a three foot long tank for their leopard gecko and they use superworms, beetles and isopods as their cleanup crew. They actually have six blue death raining beetles in here which are super interesting. These are actually a type of darkling beetle and they look like they're doing well in here. Maybe this is something I can look into for my own setups, but the tank looks great, lots of places to hide and explore, and a really cool background to top it off. This is a nice bright bioactive tank from Leah and her gecko Delta. She actually made the background herself and I wouldn't have known, I thought that looked very natural, it's very nice, and clearly Delta loves it. It looks like she has a combination of succulents and air plants and she's using slate, rocks and driftwood. Very nice. And finally, we have Alexa's setup, which went from this to this. Wow, <laughs> what a transformation. So she went from a 20 to a 40 gallon tank. She now uses a deep heat projector and a shade dweller. She did note that there was some humidity spikes when she was watering her plants and wondered if this was okay. That is fine. I mean, in the wild, especially when shedding, leopard geckos will burrow down into substrate that's holding a lot of moisture, sometimes around like 90 to 100% humidity. 
So a little spike here and there isn't a problem. You run into issues when they're exposed to really high humidity continuously in stagnant air. But um, overall, very nice. So I hope you've enjoyed today's setups. As I said, I have plenty to get through, so I'm sure we'll be doing another video. Also, don't forget to check out my interactive care guides. And if you like this video, please hit the like button. But thank you for watching, guys, and goodbye.